All right, hello, hello. All right, so while we're just waiting for some, uh, you know, people to uh, join us for our webinar today, uh, which thank you for joining us for being on time. Uh, so uh, before we get into the content itself, just uh, keeping in mind a bit of what we'll be going over today, which is just a, an overview of your Handshake profile and perhaps some of the different content that you might want to include in each of your individual sections. So we'll give it another minute or so before we dive into the content itself. Uh, but today we will be using my uh, profile as kind of a blueprint for us to focus on. Uh, as we can see, I am Megan Wood. I am one of the career coaches at the center, uh, so it doesn't uh, necessarily reflect all of the correct information. This is a student profile that uh, I have created for the purpose of going over our content today. Um, but we can, at this point, you know, we can get started. There's uh, quite a few sections to get through and get into. So thank you for joining us. And if at any point throughout our session today you have any questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A. Uh, you don't have to wait until the very end, although if more questions come up at the end, there will be time. Uh, so feel free to put questions in whenever you have them as we go through different sections. So with that, first we're going to start over on the left column and we're just going to work our way down and then same thing, we're going to work our way down from the right going down. So if we are starting on the left and I do see we have a question if it, this will be recorded, yes it is being recorded, so you will be able to view the recording, but there is also just a version that is pre-recorded on our YouTube channel of each of our webinars that you can access at any time as well. So there will be content that you can review. Good question. Um, so again, keep them, keep them coming. Keep as many questions as you have uh, coming. But just to get started, firstly, to navigate to this page, if we start on you know, the profile here, um, what we can see is our uh, kind of name here. It'll either have your initials or if you have a photo uploaded, it will have your you know avatar, your photo. So you can always click that and then click my profile to navigate to this page. And once we are on this page, uh, again, we're just gonna start from left and go on down. So firstly, we're gonna see this little box that's essentially just an overview of like who we are, uh, starting with a photo. And I would recommend including a photo if you have just a nice professional headshot. It does not have to be fancy. This is a photo that I had someone take of me with an iPhone camera. It does not have to be a huge to-do where you hire a professional photographer and make sure it's a fancy uh, camera. It can be anything as long as it's you with nice lighting, like a nice clear background. You can see mine might be a little blurry if you can see. It's just because it was, you know, portrait mode. So it's whatever works best for you. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, all that. Uh, but it can really, really benefit you to include a photo because profiles with a photo are about four or five times more likely for people such as recruiters to click on your profile and look more at your information. So definitely recommend getting a photo on there. Um, we are going to look at some of this content by clicking the edit button. So it will give you the option to include a first and last name that is including primarily your preferred name. It will auto populate with whatever name is in the registrar, but you can always change that. Um, and there's another question about the photos. It's a, if it's okay if the background is dark. Yes, it's totally fine if the background is dark, as long as it's still clear and easy to see like you and your face. But yes, having like a black or a dark background, totally fine. Good question. Um, so uh, with that, again, you'll have your name. You can also select your school year. Again, this is all information that will auto populate, but you do have the option if you wanted to update it or if you wanted to change it uh, to include whatever you feel best fits your current situation. Uh, but again, this information will get pulled from the university itself. So unless you need to update it, you don't necessarily need to worry about what's being included here. Um, it will also give you the option uh, throughout our profile to add information like when we're graduating, this gets pulled from our education section and also things like our pronouns, this will get pulled from uh, when we're setting up our account and there's lots of different things to um, be able to include there. 
Um, you'll also see this progress bar. So if you were to leave information out somewhere, uh, it would uh, just give you uh, prompts of what your next step would be on what to include. So this can just be helpful when giving yourself different options of what you might want to put in sp uh, specific sections. This next section, again, these are more logistics. Uh, so this is focusing on the visibility of your profile. So this is telling me that my profile is visible to employers, students, and alumni across all of the universities that use Handshake as their job platform. Uh, and that means that you'll be able to message other students and alumni who can help with kind of expanding your network, which can be very cool. Uh, so you can always change that, like it says here, in your settings. So if we click this, it gives us the option to look at our privacy. Uh, so community is what's recommended because this is what would allow you to, again, message other students. But if you just want it to be visible to employers or if maybe you're not ready for others to see it at all, you can always set it to private instead. But we do recommend it being set to community. Um, while we're in this section as well, uh, you can also, if you happen to be an international student, fill out your work authorization section uh, with these two questions. Like if you are legally authorized to work in the U.S., such as if you have CPT or OPT, or if you will now or in the future, you know, receive uh, or require visa sponsorship. So this is something else you can select. Uh, you can also prefer not to answer those questions, but it will as it says here, you know, you can select prefer not to answer, but and that will show up when an employer filters for students who don't require it. Um, but it can be helpful to like look at some of these kind of guides or to just learn more again by clicking this option here, which just sends you to uh, a page that Handshake has populated. Um, so those are just some things to consider uh, if you are an international student as well. But we are going to go back to our profile as it loads here we go um, so again this is just something that we recommend setting to community settings uh, and you can also if you wanted to see how an employer will look at your profile as opposed to like our edit personal version here uh, so that can be helpful too if you want to see what it looks like from their perspective um, next we are trucking on down uh, is where you can include your interests and this section is only going to be visible to employers which can be helpful if, for example, if you're currently looking for a job or an internship, for, um, for instance, this can be a great way to uh, tell them what you're looking for. So that if an employer is trying to filter down different students who they might want to reach out to, you might show up more in their results. This is an optional section. Pretty much all of this is optional, but this can be a cool way to get on their radar. Um, it will give you different prompts, like I didn't fill out some of them, so we could see what those look like. So, for example, the job hunt option, are you currently looking for a job? If we click this, it gives us the option to start editing, like, no, I'm not looking for a job, um, or yes, I am, or there's these that have, like, extra options, like, not looking for a job, I'm going to grad school, or I'm open to opportunities, you know, if the right one comes along. So you can feel free to fill that out. You can also select one or multiple things that you're interested in finding. Like if you really want something on campus or perhaps if you want an internship and potentially a part-time job if you're searching for either. Um, similarly, you can put in multiple cities that maybe you have an interest in um, as well as potential roles or industries that you want to work in. This does not have to be every single option. Like the three options that I have here are for someone who might be a uh, major studying something in education. So if, for example, you type in education, it's going to show up with a ton of options. You do not have to scroll through every single one of these options in order to pick all of the ones that interest you. You can just see a couple. And from that, it can usually come up with lots of cool uh, options or if there's a particular job title that stands out to you. But if you don't have something listed here, it is totally fine. You're not going to not show up when an employer searches. Um, if an employer does a specific search for something like this, you might just show up a little bit, you know, closer to the top, for example. Um, industries can be a great way to search uh, for something that's just way broader 
that I think can be a little bit less daunting because there are so many roles that you can possibly click and there aren't as many industries. So again, let's say you really wanted to work in education. Instead, you can just type in something like education here. And now we just have three options that we can click. One that's K through 12, one that's just other, and the other that's higher education. And that is very likely way easier to go through. Uh, so I definitely recommend filling out some of this so that any recruiters or employers that are looking at your profile can see a lot of the things that you might be looking for. So keeping on with our information, this is the personal information section. This is uh, info that you can choose to go through. All of this, unless you choose to make it public, all of this will be private information hidden from employers. Uh, the only thing you cannot change is your primary email address. Um, I want to say for alumni, you are able to change that or you're allowed to update a secondary email. Uh, because once you graduate, you don't have uh, as easy access to your UW email uh, or your UW net ID. So all of this information is totally up to you if you want to include or if you want to make it hidden from employers. Things like uh, your gender identity or things like your pronouns or so on. Um, as we're continuing down, this is our discovery section. So if we remember in our uh, profile visibility section, we set it to community. So community means that we're able to discover more students. So this can be a cool way to interact with people, and whether they be current students or whether they be alumni who have either graduated from or are students in the UW specifically, or as you can see here, these are huge numbers. So you can very easily connect with literally millions of other students from across the United States, which can be helpful if maybe you're planning on like moving somewhere else or getting a job in a different state or in a different city. So there's a ton of ways that you can interact. Like for example, if you really were interested in working you know, in orthodontics or working at Costco or so on, there's a ton of different ways that you can search for, you know, individual majors to connect with, see what other people are doing uh, with their degrees, seeing if there's opportunities, like if you really want to work at Amazon, seeing, okay, maybe who currently works at Amazon, are there different bits of insight that Caroline can provide us with or that Brendan can share. So these can all be great ways to get started with networking. And if you do have questions about networking, that's something that you can always meet with a career coach such as myself uh, to meet and talk about, or we also offer networking workshops uh, throughout the quarter as well. Uh, and that's also something that you can view on our YouTube channel uh, if you wanted to just view a pre-recorded version. Um, so we're just going back to our profile again, scrolling back on down. So again, if you have your privacy settings set to uh, community, this can be a cool way for you to be able to reach out to other students, you know, just ask them some cool things about their experiences or uh, figure out, you know, what you might want to pursue as well. Um, this can also be cool. It'll show you uh, uh, individuals who may have viewed your profile. Um, so that can be an interesting way to see uh, what type of attention you might be garnering, whether that be from other students or whether that be from uh, companies. So I know that this company has you know, viewed my student profile uh, as opposed to um, like any of the other kind of areas. So this can be very cool. Um, one of the uh, last two here are the skills section. So these are always things that you can include kind of as many as you want. I wouldn't recommend including every single thing that comes to mind, um, trying to include like 20 or 30 skills. I would keep it maybe give or take around like a dozen or so doesn't have to be a super long list, but it also doesn't have to be super short. And the skill section is actually a really uh, cool way that employers like to filter down uh, the people when they're choosing who to reach out to. Like, for example, we can see here my inbox, I have 37 messages. And many of these are companies who have narrowed down my skills and who have seen like, okay, cool. This person has the ability to use PowerPoint. This person has leadership skills. 
And they'll literally send messages saying, oh, we noticed that you have some event planning skills. We think that because of that, you would be a great fit for this role. We really encourage you to apply. So I definitely recommend filling out, whether it be with technical skills like PowerPoint or like HTML, or whether it's more task-based or interpersonal-based skills, things like event planning or public speaking, being more kind of like task-oriented, uh, or things like leadership and organization, which are just more interpersonal, things that maybe you've just gained experience with over the years. Um, so you can always just type in as many as you want, as many that come to mind. Um, and lastly, the documents section can be really helpful. And if, you know, once we start looking at some of the more content focused uh, sections here, you can actually get your resume. If you upload your resume, you can just allow it to fill out and populate all of these sections for you, like your education and your uh, experiences and volunteering or whatever else you have included, which can be very helpful because then all you have to do is just edit it just to make sure that the formatting didn't get messed up. Um, because it just pulls all of the content itself for you and just fills it out. Um, so that's something I definitely recommend starting with. If you already have a version of your resume, you've already done all of this. So instead of copying and pasting, just give it an upload. Um, this also gives you the option to, if we manage our documents, um, I just have one that's just a random resume just uploaded. Um, you can always choose to make it visible. And if we make it visible, let me go back to our profile again. Uh, it gives the option for uh, people to view it. So like, let's say this recruiter, this employer looked at my resume uh, or looked at my profile, they could view my resume so that they could see or download a version of it that they'd be able to kind of hold on to. Um, so that can be another interesting thing. And you can always, turn the visibility off so that it doesn't show up for people to. Um, so definitely recommend uploading a resume. Um, so now that we've gone through the left side, which is more just basic info about ourselves, um, we can go down the right column over here, which is going to be much more focused on the content of our experiences. Okay, and we have another question. Who's able to view the resume if it's uploaded and visible? Um, that's a good question. So uh, people who would be able to view it if it is visible um, would be essentially anyone who wants to look at your profile. Uh, so if it is set to community, there is a chance that other students might choose to view it, but at the very least, you'd be able to let employers view it. Um, so that is a good question, but keeping in mind too that most, if not everything that's on your resume would also be listed in your profile anyways. So a uh, like PDF version of your resume being uploaded would essentially just be a PDF version of your Handshake profile. Um, the only things that would be different would be primarily just additions to your profile, things like your journey or uh, maybe just expanded information because you're not um, restricted to a page. So good question. It depends on what your visibility setting would look like. Okay, no, excellent questions. So with that, we can focus again on some of this right column content. So again, starting up at the top with our journey. So the first thing here, um, I have some kind of prompts rather than a full example, because what I like to recommend you focusing on in your journey are a couple of pieces of information, some of which will relate to where you're presently at, some of which might relate to your past experiences and ultimately lead to what you want in the future. So we're touching on three big components of what's included in a timeline, a past, a present, and a future. Um, that might be out of order. You might start with the present, move into the past and end up in the future. Or maybe you'll start with the future and then talk about what you're currently studying and past experiences to get there or whatever order makes sense to you. But some potential prompts to consider might be, you know, what you are currently studying. Like, you know, I am currently studying, you know, English, for example, and my past experiences in a classroom setting in addition to working with you know, UW first year programs has allowed me to develop lots of cool skills 
in communication and teamwork, you know, because of, you know, these tasks or because of this setting that I worked in. And because of that, I'm interested in finding, this is what we're looking for in the future, you know, an experience with publishing or an experience with, you know, young students. So there's a lot of cool things that you can consider including here. Um, and another fun thing that you can use your discovery tab for is seeing perhaps like what other students with the same major as you might be included in their journey section. Um, you can also maybe even use like LinkedIn as inspiration because there's an about or journey section on LinkedIn profiles too. So definitely recommend trying to kind of fill in these blanks and it does not have to be, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, you can create just like one short paragraph or two, um, you know, short sentences even to really talk about some of these things, whatever type of depth of content you want to go into. Um, but even here, uh, the handshake when you go to edit it will give you some guiding questions as well. So definitely recommend filling this out. And uh, with any of the content on here, if you're struggling at any point, that's another thing you can meet with a coach about. So as we go a little bit lower, again, the education section, a lot of this or all of this information will just be pulled from the registrar's office. So this is content that you do have the option to edit. A lot of this you cannot change, like the school name and the college that you're in. So for example, if you apply for like a foster school, for example, and you are accepted, this quarter, you won't be able to change this. It will change for you next quarter. So this is something you can't change. You can change your major. Perhaps if you have a minor, you can always add that in as well. Um, the only info I would recommend um, making sure is updated is just your end date. You can include your start date if you want, but it's much more important when your end date is because an employer is much more interested in when you're getting ready to graduate than when you started. So just including your end date here can be really helpful. Um, you can also choose to include your GPA, whether that be a cumulative GPA or whether that be a departmental GPA. And it's not a requirement to include. And even if you do include it, you can always hide it from employers. So that's always information too, that if you're not super happy with your GPA or if you just don't want them to be able to see it, uh, you can always hide that. Okay, so this education is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's really when we get into the work and experience sections and you know organizations that you get to kind of start thinking a little bit more about what you might want to you know, talk about in your experiences. Because this is where you get to include information about you know, bullet points or different bits of info and maybe even paragraph forms. So I've included two different type of formats here so that you could see two different styles. Um, I would say the most common form is for people to include bullet points um, or you know, little dashes because that's usually the way that resumes look as well. So it can be helpful to even just again, copy and paste that information directly from your resume. Uh, you're talking about your experiences in very similar ways, whether it be this on uh, online version of your resume, basically, because that's what this profile essentially is, or whether it's the you know, like on paper version. So a lot of students will just choose to copy and paste those bullet points. But if you wanted to, instead, you could always uh, essentially keep it condensed into a paragraph format as well. There is no right or wrong answer. It is whatever looks best to you. Um, we can click this really quickly in order to see what the editing for it looks like. Uh, the only pieces of information that are required are your job title. Like in this example, I wrote, I was a student assistant, uh, the employer, UW first year programs. And with that, if it's a current position or if there's a start and an end date. Um, you can also include, if you wanted to, the location or the city that you worked in. This is not starred. Uh, so that means it is not required. And the description is also not required, but it is highly, highly, highly recommended. Because again, this is a great place where you get the opportunity to talk about not just the things you did, but also the potential skills you developed or 
uh, the accomplishments that you got as a result of that. Because not only in this experience did I you know, help students in first year programs, but I gained teamwork skills. I worked with a team to run a front desk and I worked to you know, solve problems with you know, guests who came up to this desk. So this example here is not just saying I talked to people, but it's showing that I have teamwork skills and that I have you know, management skills. I'm helping run a front desk. I'm helping answer questions. I am solving problems. So these are all interesting skills that I'm gaining or showing that I have gained instead of just focusing on a task that I did. And that can be seen through a number of other uh, skills as well. But there's lots of cool ways that if a task will make sense for a future experience, like if you had a really cool internship that directly relates to your major, maybe you do want to focus more on some of the direct tasks that you did. Um, but again, these are just some examples of ways that you can highlight your experiences. Okay. Uh, with that, you can also, there's no um, like limit on what types of experiences you can include. The types of sections that Handshake includes is work and volunteer experience. So any sort of work, uh, like job, internship, volunteering position here, um, this also includes, uh, these are potentially more specific to uh, like UW activities, like as we have here, if you were on like a sports team, or perhaps this is a volunteering position, but it was with an organization. So it is very much up to you where you want to put things, because this Peggy Adams animal shelter experience could have just as easily been listed up here. It is very much up to you. I would not stress about it. There is no right or wrong answer. Um, but this can potentially be more focused on some like UW experiences if you have some of those. Um, but again, it can just be some basic information um, about what you want to include and same things, just the position, the organization or like the student club, um, dates, location, description, pretty much identical to what you can include for these work and volunteer experiences. Another thing it gives you the option that is much more academically focused on are courses and projects. So for courses, you can consider including, again, not every single course that you've ever taken. Uh, similarly to the skills section, I would try to limit it um, just based on what you feel are, is going to be most relevant to the future roles that you might be applying for whether that be an internship or whether that be a job. Because for example, if I really wanted to get like interested in a like publishing position, or if I really wanted to get excited about you know, running for some form of campaign manager position, highlighting that I have like a public speaking class and that I've taken expository writing could potentially be very helpful because it gives the person who's reading my profile the option to just better understand the skills that I might have developed, but not yet gotten a chance to use in an per, in an in person or hands on setting yet. So, same for the courses, you can always choose to just add the course name. It gives you some general options here, um, but you know whatever you want to include. Um, you can also choose to include the course code, um, but I think that the name itself usually suffices just because anyone who's reading this who isn't familiar with what UW's course codes look like or what they mean isn't going to know what you mean when you say like bio 101 or like 122. Like, they're just not going to know what that means. So I usually recommend just sticking with the course uh, title itself. Um, and lastly, the projects section can also be an interesting way uh, to just highlight some of the, again, potentially academic experiences or maybe even just personal experiences uh, that you've started to use um, your skills in. So again, if I'm really interested in like getting in um, like a publishing position somewhere, highlighting the fact that I have experience with a published article at the daily and also focusing on what is included here which if we again edit it, we can see what information we can uh, include. So again, the name of your project, if it was 
uh, a particular position that you held on that project. Like let's say you were doing something in a lab, you might include, which we'll look at a blank one for this. Um, if you were doing a lab uh, project for like a research position, you might include the title of your lab project. For the position, you might put like research assistant or you know what specific uh, type of team member you were uh, in that situation. Again, this is not starred. This is not required. The only thing that is required is honestly just the name. Um, if there is a URL to this project, whether it be like in this example, an article somewhere, or whether this be something where you maybe use something like HTML or Java or R, and there is a portfolio online or a link to it somewhere, you can include that URL. Um, you can also include if it was maybe attached to a like course that you took. If you worked on it all quarter long, you can include the start and end dates. Um, usually, again, if it's longer than a month, if it was just like a one day thing that you worked on, you do not have to include dates. Um, but lastly, I do recommend also including just a short description of what you did there. Like, for example, this brief description is just focusing on, you know, wrote an article about community service opportunities with Habitat for Humanity. It's also highlighting that the daily is a UW student paper. You could also, if you wanted to, include maybe a skill that this helped you develop. You know, the process helped me gain a better understanding of the process of you know, the publishing industry in this example. So there's no right or wrong answer for what you want to include information wise, or if you even want to include anything at all. But again, this can be something based on like work that you've done with an RSO. If there's a project, it can be like a classroom project, whether that be in a lab setting, whether it be a presentation that you had to give, some form of like deliverable or assignment, uh, or even like a presentation or a paper that you had to write. Uh, so there's a lot of cool academic experiences that you can very much uh, include on the Handshake profile as well. Um, and again, there's no limit to how many, like whereas on a resume, you might just want to keep everything to you know, one solid page, but on our you know, handshake profile, you might notice you can just scroll. There's no uh, page limit. So if you were feeling like you had to leave off information, if you're writing a resume, that's something you don't really have to deal with on this document um, because it is a website versus a document, uh, which can be very helpful. Um, so that does leave us with plenty of time for questions. If there is anything that's coming to mind for what you might want to focus on. Um, again, we talked about a lot of different types of content uh, from the journey to different like visibility settings, how to include different uh, experiences. Um, so if there are any questions, we've got plenty of time for it. Just let me know. And if not, then I hope you all have a great rest of your day and thank you for joining me.